you know the Lost Kings of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Svetlana Stalina Level. But right now, of course, we're, we are up. Come back to Do You Know the Lost Kings of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Svetlana Stalina Level. But right now, of course, we're, we are applying for OFN aid, even though we did the visit to Washington, but they rejected us. The U.S. government has responded to a proposal for a meeting between our presidents with a carefully worded statement. In short, their answer is no. It's certainly a slap in the face, especially after all of our careful diplomatic efforts. Well, we're not good enough for you, which is going to lead to discontent. It's not good. But there's really not much else we can do about that, so... Oh, well. And expected the Americans reject our port offer. Disappointing news has just come to us from Washington. Wow. The American government has noted that our offer of basing rights on the white sea has benefits, and that it is our continually positive diplomatic relations. The price tag was ultimately too high for them to justify, and negotiations over the agreement broke down, and unfortunately, they broke down quite publicly. Word of affairs already made its way to the press, and some commentators to call in for the foreign minister to resign over the matter. With the, with the diplomatic row and the loss of a potential financial left line, this has clearly been a major blow to our government standing. Why can't people just blame the Americans? As they probably should. Airland battle. For the last time, officer, I'm not handing over the strategy of this country to the council that thinks the army can be relegated to a secondary priority. The threat of a binary punctuated lost words and his thrill cough flinched. At least a commander had an aim for his head this time. If the council truly believes that this newfangled strategy is what is best, I think it is best that we safeguard the real power away from them until they are disabused of the notion. Thrill cough nodded helplessly. Commander Grigorenko, please, this is not a usurpation or anything of the sort. We're simply attempting to do a better strategy now that our air force is, working in, is in working condition. After all, we in the Republic cannot afford casualties the same way large countries do. Ain't that the truth? Another binder thud, this one louder than the first. You are delusional if you think that the airline strategy will safeguard our losses. Well, Kov, I've been working for close to a decade in the military, and our entire operational doctrine has been continued to work with the combined armor infantry operations. The Air Force will complicate the state of affairs by stealing resources and money from us. Uh, throw a couple needed his temples. Commander, there's st there is to be no stealing. We will allocate funds as we seem fit for the health of the Republic. Moreover, we are aware of this transition to airland battle will take quite a while, which is why we need you to board. Who else could train with us? Grigorinko simply shook his head. Tell your council that they have two options. They can stick with my suggestions or they can stumble around in the dark by themselves. I will not stand for the strategic blunder and I cannot live with myself if I were to further. Now go. So with infantry primacy. I think airland battle is probably sounds a little bit more promising. Uh, let's get through Ministry of Defense together first, because there's another one here too. The ministry, Ministry's antics. We have just finished up uh, Embassy funding as well, which got more political power. Spent a little more money, but you know, what else is new? And over here, is there anything else? No. So we're still trying to integrate these guys. Now yeah, we've just been hanging out too. I just clicked on installing our state poverty relief, which would be very, very, very quite good for us. And we'll probably hire four instructors, even though this one is very good as well. Actually, we might go with this one first, just because we're already at less than 50% poverty rate in our country. That is awesome. That is flipping awesome. Really, really great. Um, anything else around here? Yes. Local infrastructure. I love doing that one. It's literally just free infrastructure. Hopefully we can integrate these guys. Since we're just kind of hanging out anyways with 31 divisions. They're not good divisions, but there's still 31 of them. Every single one of these has an event, except for this one, so... Oh, I'll keep going with each other for now. <clears throat> the Ministry's antics. They have been a fist fight in the General Headquarters for quite some time now, so Korolkov was taken by surprise when the latest iteration broke out. Uh, it had been sudden, too. One minute there was a reasonable discussion regarding prioritization of funding to be given to the Military Research Department. The next full-on fist fight had been in progress, with many middle aged on both sides struggling to either restrain uh, or deck their peers. Korolkov sighed. Another day in the Ministry of Defense and its assemblies are some of glories. Well, glories was a strong term, but he lacked another word for it. At least this paperwork will be of use to the Republic. A paper drafted by one of his staffers on the movement of hybridized troops in the last days of the West Russian War. I know how to make it as applicable to the Republic's current situation. Pouring through its conclusion, uh, Korolkov nodded, making notes in the margins. There was plenty of work to be done to bring the military up to parity with its contemporaries, and this would be definitely help. A stubble headed member of the general staff approached him, and Korolkov got up to show the formalities. Stand down, I'm looking for a paperback, something to fill a gap on someone's chair. Hmm, yes, have you seen any paper spear binders? Preferably something slim. Oh, yeah, this will do. And the paperwork was snatched from Korolkov's desk. <clears throat> The general uh, staff member retreated, and Krolkov needed his temples in frustration. This was his third day of promotion, and already he had missed nothing more than the lowly status of his previous position. The Republic he was certain was doomed regardless, but at least he had been, given, been blind to it before him. My god, what a disaster. Blow, kiss, fire, gun. Korinev Korn hefted the gun stock ahead of him. There, there it was. The defect had been warned about was clear as day now. It bent just a little forward, forcing the shooter's position down by hair's breadth. Perhaps it was acceptable in the towels where standards were as low as the Altai Basin's dunes, but not here. He lowered the gun and began to pour the blueprint scattered around him in a half blossom. Perhaps it had been the material, perhaps it was a structural sight. 
cause in sight. The latter will explain why the soldiers on the testing squad complained so bitterly about the loading and loading drills. Something about the barrel then, but their reports are focused on the firing pin mechanism itself, so could it possibly be that? Maybe in the way the barrel in interacted with the firing pin? Yes, perhaps the explosion or the shot had cracked something within. A passing soldier yelled, Korondev had our work? Oh, it's almost lunch. Korondev, barely looking up, greeted him and told him in no, in no uncertain terms to go away. The soldier giggled as he left. It was adorable the way Korondev was immersed in his work. He was so blind to everything else. Absolutely adorable. Korolnev's mind was far away, however, the rifle, as did all the equipment he'd been given, preoccupied him. Some solution needed to be found in the meantime. The barrel problem would probably need a full rework of the design, perhaps even a back to basics test. But the main problem, as he saw, was drop was a drooping. Perhaps, yes, that would have to do. Korolnev scribbled, put some extra stock on the rifle and tell him to aim higher. Satisfied, he nodded and went on to the next rifle. Every soldier needs something to lean on. Even more oil? Ah, they finally accepted. They're going to build up his great head. Yay! Nice. Extra divisions, 22 divisions of militia. Let's say half of them go bye bye. That'll be good enough. <clears throat> that is a okay with us. So now we have 42 divisions. That is more than enough. 200 some political power, which is actually extremely good. Uh, as we saw earlier, we did did do that one. Hiring for instructors. Um, bonus for industry, yeah, definitely do that one. Agricultural mechanization probably will get better. Great. We are still just plugging away at all this stuff, which is awesome. I love it. The Wealth of Warmburg is very good as well. Quite good. Maybe not very good, but it's quite good. I'd say quite good. Up next, we'll probably do scientific research. Because why not? We have more than enough grid power, though. Regardless, academic uh, base, agriculture, and industrial experience will keep going up, so. And research facilities, too. Fisherman's Dream. Yemma Fomo's father whispered dreams were when she was a little child, dreaming of a fleet, shining ship of fleets. Well, shining fleet of ships. Flying the red inside and unison. Each ship, he had told her, was far bigger than the fishing junk they shared. They had guns, ammo, stores. Quarters for dozens of people on each ship, and the burnished steel shone like gold in the sun's rays, like some forgotten treasure was shown or brought to light. Of course, it had been a long time, and he had whispered, and now the Republic they were in was landlocked, for the dream now was dead. But one day, the Great Fleet would rise again. And Russia would once again take to the seas, perhaps not in her lifetime, but one day. Yemefo. Yefimova. Listen as the cold winds drifted about their junk, and as she grew, she learned. She taught herself nodding, sailing, drifting, using only the stars. And the harsh northern spirit for navigation, as she grew in her wisdom, her fishing fleet expanded from one to a half dozen. She had grown powerful, but when the Republican Navy sent its letter of invitation, she knew what she had to do. A vision, after all, was worthless if not fulfilled. She wished her father could see her now, standing upon the deck of the Republic's latest vessel. He had always been foolish, perhaps a little too detached to the drink at the end, but he never wavered, and her dreams were his dreams too. And watching the flag fly above a silver sheen ocean, gulls flung overhead as the engine world, Yefimova felt something in her heart glow. Her father, wherever he was, could rest now. His dream was here in the flesh, and she was living it for him. Can you see me now, Dad? I made it. Happy 1970, and the fall of Burgundy has happened. And we have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Wow, we're trying to integrate Orenburg and uh, get more funding for oil. <clears throat> Which is actually extremely good. Economy, trade. We have so, oh, so much oil. I love it. We could trade all that away, hopefully, maybe. Well, I guess with our current situation, probably not, but whatever. Ah, good. Very good. Very nice. Less than 4 billion in debt. That's that's pretty much worth it. And then we'll reopen the Vaca General Staff Academy, which would be good. So if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. As well as strategic supremacy, of course, reply for recognition, call for investment, and the Russian Republican Air Force, of course. They knew Hussars. It was, in the end, the budget that had decided of them for them all, not tactics. No, no armor specifications, not even the opinions of the tank crews themselves. The budget simply didn't have enough room for them, the additions of tank units to the regiments of the existing armor corps. It would be necessary to reconsolidate the existing assets into a single unit and retrain them day and night until they could perform the roles they missed. So the People's Hussars Division, as it was known, no one could remember the actual name in reference, uh, or number in reference, was formed, and the farmers and their sons and daughters watched the tanks move row on row into distant fields, towards the bases where they had to be christened in a new name and mold. They were failures, or always were. A few of the new models, fresh from the factory, had broken down in a muddy field, and no one was yet sure of the equipment failure or planning error that had brought them down. The rest of the models were dragged onto the main road and confined to purely motorized activity until something could be done with them. Time would tell if they needed to rebuild or if they could serve a supplementary function of the motorized core. Even so, as the base commanders noted the plates and licenses of the tanks arrayed, there was reason for celebration. This new the divisions already had plans in the works for full-blown multi-branch exercise, and some whispered that its commanding officer was a glory hound who would push his men to the limit. 
There's a sense of general anticipation. This one, it was believed, would go far and would take the Republic with it. Let us hope it will make a difference. Up next, uh, that's not bad. Get more political power, but we need more war support. Whatever gives us more war support, I'll be fine with. Oh, there goes. Ooh. Now, probably lose stability. Propaganda campaigns? That's not bad. I like the expanding the power gears, but we don't really need to do that one, so. 3.45 billion has dropped to what? Nothing. 3.45 billion. Not bad. It's only five percent more support, but we could we could really use it. So good. Next one will improve factory complexes to modern industrial equipment. Be nice. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, we just fix that one up. This is not bad either. Max, mass mechanization to go to modernized agriculture would be very good. Modern research facilities doing quite well. Not bad either. Alexander Men. This is oh god, work. I hate work. Oh, I'm meeting at the station. God, this place uh, is so far. Sokolov grumbled as he checked the timing for his truck. His rusty old wristwatch had been a gift from Dad, but there's no sign of his father's precision now as he watched the dusty road. It had been. And this whole contraption was accurate almost half an hour since the scheduled delivery to the military academy. How the heck was he supposed to get there on time? Yes, far indeed. I've been waiting 45 minutes myself. There was a twinkle in the other man's eye. Sokolov says that a month as suspicious as a minor son in a poor district could be of someone who looked suspiciously bourgeois. Dressed in relatively well-tailored clothing, with a little cap to stave off the wind, this man looked nothing like what he'd been told to encounter. I don't believe we've met. I'm Simeon. You? Sokolov glared at, it, at the hand, then relented and shook. I'm Sokolov, south of Siktivkar. You were the Academy. Simeon, if that was his real name, nodded, his smile firm on his face. Well, then. I suppose we'll get acquainted eventually. What's your designated specialization? The man rustled about in his breast pocket and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper. Ah, I'm assigned to artillery fire control. Your infantry standards, right? I, th I know they're taking a lot of them these days, and you seem a type. Sokolov nodded, chuckling a little. Can't believe they sent me to Vyaka after sending me into the rod bodies. I think the army wants to kill me between the both of us. Simeon chuckled back. And the error between them grew, grew easy. Why did you sign up? The course ain't going to be easy for none of us. Men almost seem shy. The same reason as you. <clears throat> I love my country. He waved to the fields around him, balanced as the sky itself, and I want to keep it free, Sokolov nodded. The two were very different, but they were going to get along just fine. The hunter's boys and leave his men. America recognizes, as well as England. A diplomatic message has arrived from Washington and London. The governments of the U.S. and England intend to officially recognize our West Russian Republic as a sovereign state and to treat us as such in all diplomatic conduct. The support of the U.S. and the OFN alongside it was a major diplomatic victory for us and will undoubtedly help us uh, secure a place on the world stage. Hail Columbia! Nice. Grazia Italia. Even though Ital Italy's not in the OFN either. We should have done this side first before doing the other side. That's my fault completely. So, my bad. But I guess Italy is... Not even in its own faction. Well, everybody, now here we are at. We have an election year. But if you'd like to, like to read about power play, please go right ahead. Let's see what the youngsters can do. We're doing the 1971 elections. And if you want to read about that, please go right as well. For all these as well, the PSD campaign once more, is, of course. A patriotic platform. As well as stress the border issue, which I might have never read before, but oh well. If you want to read about all these, please go right ahead. And of course, I've definitely read this one, so there you go. The PSD wins the elections. With... Russia's unification drawing closer and closer has become clear that these elections may determine the fate of the entire motherland. The campaigns for this election have been fierce, with each of the parties wanting to be the party that unified the motherland. In the end, the Sovereign Democratic Party won the elections with newly elected President Selena giving her inaugural speech in front of the National Assembly earlier today. Formed to the fight the rising threat of extremism in the old Komi Republic, the PSD now stands the most nationalist party in the Russian Free Republic, having always pushed for the most of the unifying form of the motherland. With the annexation of Western Siberia, President Selena has promised to stomp out the communist and Black League remnants on, on, on repairing the infrastructure in the region destroyed by war. The PSD's nationalist rhetoric appears to have struck a chord with the voters, who clearly desire to see the motherland made whole once more. With Svetlana Selena now possibly overseeing the unification of Russia, all of Russia waits to see how she will determine the motherland's future, for democracy for the Republic for the motherland. So now we have another focus tree, yay! Uh, if you're about to enter the atomic cage, please go right ahead, because I've read that one many, many, many times, but we'll begin reading the Sovereign Mandate. We just secured a new mandate spanning the entirety of Russia. We must now use it to spread our fair democracy to our brethren in West Russia, as well as our new residents in West Siberia. Our republic must make itself worthy for public support and ensure a strong, sovereign Russia. That is, by the people, for the people. Or then can we unite with the rivals and stand against a Nazi menace? Which, we do have a little bit of this. We really supposed to not bad, but I've already converted these divisions over to the infantry divisions, which are 43 combat width. So, we'll keep working on making sure these guys are good. Uh, of course, we have to fight Rourke the second, which is going to be a big old pain in the butt. I'll probably complain a lot. So, I apologize ahead of time for camping, uh, complaining a lot. Also, I did use cons commands for this because I just don't care anymore. So, But we do have 36 billion in uh, GDP, which is really nice. Very, very nice, actually. So, we can already strike them if we really want to. I uh, raised up our nationalist influence just a little bit because they're always, under, they're always under the progressive wing, which is fine, whatever. And parties, less than 40%. I love social nationalism. 
Oh, uh, modern research facilities. We're doing very well in research. Just, just incredibly well. Secondary schooling, not bad. Modern agriculture, of course. Uh, that's okay. Innovative stuff. Uh, that's not bad. We probably won't get any more upgrades. Maybe except for political interference here. We'll probably get a professional army. So, which is always good as well. So, uh, ooh, that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. End of election season. The two and that as well, and then this one. Siberian security. Our conquests in the West Siberia not only give us more resources to work with, but also we have more potential threats to handle. Political opponents will still remain throughout the deserted uh, region. <clears throat> we must make sure that the residents of Siberia are held to the same nationwide standards as everyone else, while trying to get rid of the dreaded two men and black league terrorists. It's our job to ensure the Republic is safe from domestic extremists. Oh, that's not bad. I like that too. So Talos Magnets may politically align in a different direction, extending democracy. Uh, it's not bad. Not really worth it going down first. Annual growth factor. We could become an open observer, which would be nice. Reconstructing the wasteland. Extend the welfarist model. Consolidate the energy sector. Ooh, that's, that's pretty good, too. Hmm. Siberian security for some. And the Association of Registry Act. With an ever-growing population of Russians from across Eurasia, there's bound to be a few political dissenters here and there. We must make it clear that some of these ideologies will not be tolerated, as they are against the principles of human liberty. We should pass an act that requires all former members of the Communist Party and Black League to disclose their membership so that we know who these dissenters are. Any person who was once affiliated with either party and refused to disclose it will, of course, be arrested. Of course, at 71, we are a little bit behind the schedule, but they're still taking attrition. Nice. And... Yeah, that's good to see. I, mean, I think we're taking attrition... Actually, what is supply like? We did build a supply point up there. Uh, attrition's not great down here, but we'll work on it. <clears throat> Followed up with partnership in Zlatost. We look to the east and find a newly acquired western Siberian region, a place where trade once reigned as the Evgeny Dragunov made a fortune selling his guns to the long-extinguished warlords. We could learn a few lessons from his government's former administration. We need to partner up with Zlatost's former bureaucrats and businessmen to solidify our control of the region, while also scouting for people who are experienced in administrative positions. And let's come over here and grab some more logistic companies because our boys are quite thick. Hey, we've learned about better research facilities once again. Please go ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Nice. That's really good. Still no debt, which is awesome. We're acceptable level as well, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Free market capitalists here. And that's looking good overall. I mean, modern industrial equipment. Nice. And then we re reconstruct the wasteland. Currently, one of our biggest problems lies in the infrastructure. Even though our predecessors treated this land well and gave it life, there is still much more we can do to build this country up. For now, we should focus on restoring infrastructure and improving our cities to develop a strong core. Not only will our land development allow troops to move faster, but to keep our population well fed, a quality that many Rus not many Russian warlords have for the people. Awesome. <clears throat> Even more growth. Nice. Except for Russian Sovereign Wealth Fund. Ooh, inflation goes down, and income tax will also increase. And credit, raising will, credit raise, rating will also increase. Go up as well. Very, very good. Nice. Better engineers will be good for defense. Even better engineers as well. Actually, how much anti-air do we have? Do we have enough? Uh, actually, that's not a terrible amount. Uh, they're not using recon right now. Anti-air might be the way to go, though. Extend the welfare model. Our republic currently suffers from internal strife within the general population. Our citizens often criticize our military expansion, which leads to conflict between civilians and the government. A new welfare program will both strengthen the republic and quell the many disputes arising between our people and the administration. Professional army. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. There you go. There you go, do that. Do that. You as well. Nice. Let me add to air superiority here, if possible. A lot of fighters. Oh, a lot of jet improved jet fighters. Tactical bombers. Early cast. There you go. Even more cast if possible. Use whatever we have at our disposal. There you go. I don't want to see any attack bombers because that's very annoying to deal with. Transport planes. Don't care either. Interceptors. Don't care. Not will be bothered with that stuff. Consolidate the energy sector. Though our military conquests are through them, we have captured many sources of oil. We now have plenty of oil to sustain our military and provide a surplus to our citizens. It would be very beneficial for us to, to create our very own oil and gas administration to manage the energy resources we have gathered. Through this, we could give a little extra power to the energy sector of our republic. Nice. 
as you can see, our debt to GDP ratio has been up and down, up and down, up and down, which is not bad. But as long as it's all zero, that's all I care about. Oh, even better. So we actually have now zero supply issues whatsoever. Or very close to zero. Because these guys are how strong? Very strong. 900,000 manpower. We have more than double. We have about double their capacity. Actually, double the production units. More than double the manpower. We got a lot of divisions, though. Doesn't mean they're strong. Establish a sovereign wealth fund. Our economy is in need of a sovereign wealth fund that can be used to properly develop Russia. We need to establish a central bank that can invest in stocks, bonds, hedge funds, anything to enhance our public finance. Having this kind of investment fund will help pull us closer to the economic prosperity we need to produce a strong Russia and help our citizens live wealthy lives. Nice. And once these guys are done, we'll go to war. Because they're very close to being finished. Like 90% of the way there. Beautiful. 2.5 million. Billion. Cool. We need more chaos, obviously, but whatever. We need battle tanks. Yeah, tanks just cost so much to make. Anti-air. Ooh, we need more anti-air. That's good to know. Mm, go down by one. Do tank. Go down by that much. Exciting democracy. We've been growing powerful in our little corner of the world, and some in our administration even say we're approaching world power status. It seems like our mission of a spreading democracy to all of Russia is finally starting to pay dividends. Our people could always use a little morale boost to get them working hard, encouraging them to go beyond the imaginary limits that once confined us to our portion of Russia. We must all work to bring the blessing of human liberty to the entirety of what was once the oppressive Soviet Onion. Defensive breakthrough? Always worthwhile. Ooh, they just... Ooh, the nationalists are still underneath a little bit. Let's go with them. And with so much political power, it doesn't really matter too much. Nice. Good stuff. They're lower unity, but whatever. Hmm. There you go. Do that, too. Oh, that's good. That's good. Get some more logistics, just in case. Further OFN ties? Many members of our government w watched the rise of fascism and communist regimes with their own eyes, and we all watched chaos ravage what was left of the Union. Even today, we witness a brutal oppression uh, set forth by the Nazi Party and the Empire of Japan. Our democratic brothers in North America and Australia worked to defend the fledgling democracies around the world, and we want to join the ranks one day. To start, we need to extend more uh, diplomatic overtures to the OFN and let them know of our intentions. Tajikistan, Turkestan, Legion. Huh. Black dogs. Anarchy. <clears throat> well, as long as they're all killing themselves, that's fine with us. The Twin Eagles. Our relationship with the OFN has been rather minor, as they still view us as a smaller force within the vastness of decayed Russia. We must send our diplomats to attend meetings with the OFN affiliates if we're ever going to increase our diplomatic status with our organization. It also benefit us to invoke the National Sovereignty Act in order to gain an OFN defensive guarantee. Through these first maneuvers, we will improve our relationship with the United States, and like two soaring eagles, we will fight to the death to ensure democracy for all the struggling peoples of the world. Nice. From warrior to beggar. Please, comrade, I'm begging you. I've been everywhere else possible in the city, and this is the last place I know will accept applicants. You always need more hands in the mind. Yes, I can work extra hours. I can work above quota, please. The manager slammed the papers under the desk, silencing the man from Omsk. He shook his head, his eyes full of disdain. I will hear no more of this. I will say again, as the papers clearly state, not only were you a member of the All-Russian Black League, a radical militarist organization, you were employed as a lower king officer within its ranks. We cannot accept such extremism in our workplace. Desperation well to the man's eyes. I put all of that behind me, comrade. I joked out. I followed Yazov because if I hadn't, I, I would have been shot or worse. Please, comrade, I have nowhere else to go. I haven't had a job in three months. I've had to go to soup kitchens for my meals. The manager frowned. That is not my company's issue and not relevant to the discussion. Now, leave my office or I'll call security. Those words struck like a bullet into the heart. In that moment, desperation and fear boiled into anger. He couldn't continue the lies anymore. Who did this stuffy bureaucrat think he was? Just another pencil pusher from Siktikar? He was a warrior of the Black League, drilled, trained, and crafted to be the perfect Russian soldier, the perfect specimen of the Persian German horde. The great trial awaited them all, and none of them even realized it. He had a destiny, an effing destiny, and that uh, lady of Selena ripped it from him. But he had to calm down. He had to maintain discipline, as he was told his men so many years ago. His rage cooled, and the reality of the world came bearing down on him. So he rose from his seat and stepped out of the man's office, another rejection, rejected application. Oh, it'll be cold on the streets. Come winter. Our men are ready. Hopefully more ready than the enemy. That is my hope. That we won't struggle too much, but we'll probably struggle. And encourage local democracy. The federal government always said it seemed to have the greatest concentration of power, but it's the local government where the people's voice is best heard. Local administrations are much better suited to tackle local problems than the federal government, so we should encourage people to participate in the regional elections. The most important changes often come from elections at the lowest level of democracy. Even more surplus every year. I love it. You know, we invest all this money. We get 1.2% more growth. That's not really worth it, but you know, whatever. 
We actually might be able to max. We could we could actually max this out. That'd be really nice. Huh. That's so so not bad. Tons of fuel. We're still missing anti-air. Twin eagles, nice. Very good. Probably get observer status. That'll give us a lot of fuel. All right, and a framework for popular involvement. When you come with a plan to secure our democratic ideals in case something unfortunate happens in the next election, we'll establish a framework for regional referendums to ensure that the public majority still supports our causes, even if we somehow lose the next vote. That way, the PSD agenda will be diffused among the population where it could, be, where it could counteract a potential PSD loss in elections. Not sure why you guys still exist, but goodbye. Well, if we do a general attack, could we win here? Before we do that, up to 66 divisions. We have 50, 55 factories, 42 divisions. Okay, so far, not, not bad. Rook is usually a pain in the giant butt to kill, so it's only beginning, so. We get more attack, we got more organization, even more organization. Recovery rate. Um, it's not bad. We have more attack, quite a bit more defense, and more organization. We have more output, of course. And more organization, my goodness. More recovery rate, and more division defense. And combating, a, oh, they have a fiscal crisis. That, ooh, military spending factor. No, no wonder we might be doing well against them. It's not bad. Uh, onward to the future. In this term, we've accomplished many of our goals, both foreign and domestic. We work with the resource departments to improve the economy. We work to shatter the authoritarian influence at home and work to better relationship with the OFM. One major goal remains. We must fight to bring all Russian people together under a better freedom of life, liberty, and prosperity. It is during this term that we will unite all of Russia against a wicked Nazi influence that demolished the identity of Russia long ago. It's time for the free republic to start a final offensive. I should have done this one earlier. Party again to rapidly improve. Oh my goodness. That sounds really nice. Yeah, I should have used some more motorized units, but whatever. Um, I can do that. Supply wise, we need to get that air supply base. Oh no, this, one, this is not the last one, so. Cool. <clears throat> Good, we got that one done. Ace fighter promoted, which is fine. Military police, anything over there? Not really, that we really care about. Um, whatever. I do want to use transport planes, but it didn't really happen this campaign. But whatever. Hey, you got Nova Severe Scouts, really good. We'll get supply through there. Um, any supply three? Oh no. There's like no supply three except for this point here, which is really not good. I've got 96,000 of them, which is very, very nice. Mm. There we go, got supply three, which is very good. We're gonna start suffering supply issues up in the north, though. Not ideal. We try that, maybe. But I kind of doubt it'll do anything. If you're about establishing close facilities, please go right ahead. Three billion is surplus. While well, having fully mobilized military. That ain't bad. That's why I get logistics companies because they're gonna cost they're gonna cost us a lot. Alright, they're close enough. Don't care, development stage, we'll keep working on development stuff. Yeah, this is a lot easier than I thought. It helps that the enemy cannot afford military. Which I struggle. When I played this Ponylon, when I played the whole Tino Easter egg for this, like it was ridiculously difficult. I mean not ridiculously, but it was pretty difficult. Like it was just not it just wasn't very mm, the story was great, but don't get me wrong. We could use some improvement. Because the whole Far East, I mean, I guess it just doesn't not do well. Because it's really difficult to play. So, I don't know. Foundation for research, why not? We got enough in reserves that I don't care. This is one of the rare times that we actually are making a ton of money while having a fully mobilized force and beating the living crap out of anybody else. 9% growth. Holy crap. Dude. 21,000 lost versus 200,000. There's us. Oh, Rook the Third is here now. Uh, someone wants me to play as Rook the Third, so we'll get there eventually. I promise you that. 
We have 70 production units, not bad. Quarter million left, roughly. 30 million. Supplies, though. It's gonna be rough. Supply base right there. If we could get over there. Yeah, someone go right there. That'd be good. Obviously, it's not connected, but we're working on it, getting all the way down to here, across Noyarsk. What would happen if we did this? Oh no, we can't definitely. I can't do that. Oh boy, yeah, definitely can't do that. Okay, huh? Acceptable. I'd like to go up to intermediate if possible. I just want to go as high as we possibly can. Let's go with that one. Foundation for research. Address your uranium problem. Yes, please. With the loss of their, uh, a lot of industry. Oh, did they get rid of that whole thing with unshackled thing of a bob? Or, uh, not unshackled. Oh, they saw the fiscal, looming fiscal, combating fiscal crisis. Crown corporatism. <laughs> Is there a way that we could see how much in debt they are? No. It's all civilian intel stuff. What is this? Military, Navy, Air Force. Lost oh, industrial capacity. Lost bombers. They produce one bomber. Talk about trucks. Trains. Total damage industry. <clears throat> Expand the Kurgan mines, just please. And we'll go with uh, air adoption, too. Just awesome. Infantry anti tank. More land out attack. I guess the goal technically is to go all the way to here. Kill it off only 400,000 of them, that's all. Secondary school is doing quite well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we over, open super GDP growth. That's why it's so much higher now. Nice. Inflation is less than one percent. That's insane. Holy crap! That's awesome. Ooh, supply issues now down here. We gotta grab this. We go in there. We'll get that one. We'll get we'll get supply through here, and we gotta get down here too. But cutting these guys off is gonna be probably the most important thing to do. Um. Oh. Good, right there. And then we have one right there too, which will help us out with front over here. And hey, supply up there is good too. Not bad. It's a little slow going, that's all. I guess we could have made motorized divisions too, but whatever. Source form material, yes please. Yes. 99. One more month and we'll have it. And where are we at? 3.85 billion, almost 10% real growth. But we have a little bit of debt, huh? No. No. Do we have any more production? Holy crap. Flammenwerfer? Hey, you got these guys off. Good job. You might want to kill them off, though. There you go. These guys will die. Yeah, 43 come with infantry divisions. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Do we have more we can do here? Oh, I guess we can do this one too. I don't do that. Okay. Advance it? Yes. Nice. Good stuff. Now we have a little bit of debt, but whatever. We'll pay it off. Oh, you guys are alive, huh? That's a mistake. Never mind. They're dead. Almost 600,000 dead. Base. Base power. Promoted to sun. Yes, please. Industrial expertise continues to improve. Nice. So, a streamlined bureaucracy. All I can go up next to is well of the machine. It's awesome. Oh, they're actually taking us. Look at that. Nice. Beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. They're out of manpower. They're done. Uh, 
Okay, so they seem like they're more... They got out of their debt issue, maybe? Or they just declared bankruptcy. But at this point, I don't think there's very much they can do. With all the losses they suffer, with no spare manpower, with roughly the same amount of divisions as we do, but... <clears throat> obviously looking a lot weaker. As we're focusing on a navy, but not really. Um, not bad. This is the easiest time I've ever taken out work. And this is this is kind of weird, but yeah. You will be united no matter what. Oh, do we win? Nice. And there goes all of our growth. 9% is going to drop down pretty hard. Oh, we lost 8% growth because we tried to integrate all these areas. Holy crap. But there we go, my friends. We did it. And we just chased the sun, too. So now, reunify the motherland. If you remember that, please go ahead. Free at last, by God Almighty, free at last. A nation of steel. With no political power. And one more event, probably. I love how it just auto does the audio stuff when you're done with it. <clears throat> We'd be in no position to take out Germany, honestly. Like, as much as I'd love to, we don't have the divisions. We have the industry. We might actually have the industry board eventually, once we get everything, like, finished off here. But. We probably have one more event, at least. Full United, that's what we like to see. Is there anything else? Usually we have to wait till we get to the, uh... Oh, and that's the end for the, this part of the chapter for, uh... Spadlana Stelina. Oh, we also look at the Siberian plan. Cap goes down. Construction speed, resource efficiency gain, growth factory output. Not bad. Not bad at all. <clears throat> now we're doing that okay. And we've shot up to like 1% more growth. Well, that's not very good. Huh. Well. <clears throat> it's usually at this point we get something. If not, I'll pl keep playing a little bit off screen until we might find something. But at least we got more growth now. Well, unfortunately, everybody, it's March 31st, almost April. Well, I guess now it's April 19th. 373, not 37, 373, but there's been no event for saying Selena's won here and stuff like that, which is really kind of disappointing, but. I guess that's going to be it for, us, for this campaign. Uh, we've integrated pretty much every place except for Western Mongolia, which is going to take an extremely long time, but, you know, it is what it is. Ooh, that's looking really good. But, here's the economy at the end. Seven billion, seven and a half billion in uh, yearly surplus with a fully mobilized army still. Same fully mobilized army. Um, growth is still looking pretty good. Made it a little bit better, but that's pretty much going to be it for us to, here today. I guess they won in Iran as well. OFN did. Uh, Africa's looking pretty Frenchy. And, of course, we have everyone around here. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.